Well then, um, we've um, been quite weak really because we've been taken, our interest has been taken by Joanne Lamont's speech and uh, I was first alerted to the fact that she'd made this speech when you published the cartoon about her really having a blue rinse and we're in our, uh, that uh, house coat again. Uh, so, you know, and for the last two days the Twitterati in Scotland have all been discussing the speech and uh, basically, as far as I can make out, unless you're a unionist journalist and, com and commentator, it's a disaster for Labour in Scotland. It's, it's a suicide note. From my personal point of view, as someone who in my local area votes Labour at council level because I know the man and I know the job he does, um, at Holyrood level, I'm quite happy to give one of my votes to our local MSP, and at Westminster level, I regularly vote for our Labour Member of Parliament. I now can't do that. As far as I understand, Joanne Lamont wants to do away with universal benefits. And she's, every, everything about social democracy has been wiped clean from uh, the Labour Party. So what kind of party are they now? Well, the problem, even, even if she doesn't mean she wants to do away with them, she wants to look at them in depth. I'm sorry, I don't want them looked at in depth. I want more of them. I want people taxed so that everybody can have that universal benefit. I, I don't see means testing as any way a good thing. You means test rich people, or probably moderately well-off people, and you're taking away their reason for paying tax. I mean, it says, I mean, how much does it cost to provide a bus pass for rich people? Well, nothing, because most of them most, don't use most it. Most of them don't use it, and also well, she doesn't seem to understand they have to be used for it to become a cost. Yeah, and, and, and the, the key issue, tabulated, the yeah. key issue is it's it, it's like a clause four speech that she made. This is how yeah. it's described. It's the end of the Labour Party as we know it. So well, why vote Labour again? It's it's all part of that. It's still New Labour. Um, it's very it's much very, very, very much New, new Labour. Labour. It's it's neocon, the whole look of it. We're moving towards that Americanized way. I mean, when you go to Scandinavia where they get lots of universal benefits and they have a very progressive tax system. When you don't have universal benefits, you have no argument for a progressive tax system. What you have is basically um, a safety net there at the bottom, a very usually inadequate because it will get driven down and driven down and driven down. Well, I think she's just scared. And also, if you looked at the speech, uh, everything in there, it's most of the things in there, well, everything in there literally was because Labour was always the um, party in, 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 in local government that they introduced. And, uh, and now that the SNP have adopted them, yeah. then they're wrong. I was wrong about the, the three parts of Labour that, sh that this speech was intended to unite was London, the M MPs, Edinburgh MSPs and local government yeah. and what she didn't talk about is in any way she protecting local government didn't mention as someone said the biggest part of the Scottish budget is spent on the salaries in local government so and that's where you really need to cut is is this, she, she's not going to do that is she's this avoided. essentially the Scottish Labour Party attempting to defend their only power base, the only power base they see in the future, local government. That's what the, that's what the, the argument that's is. That's vanishing. So what happens to Holyrood when they can't get any Labour SNPs in there, Remember. how then do they protect their power base in local government? The decisions will be left, left to the SNP and if it's a Labour power base, at local government level, the SNP it, are going to leave the, it there. Well, it was all about unity. So. They've been fighting. Don't forget what was happened the week before. Um, somebody, is it somebody Smith and at uh, John Smith House? Colin, Colin Smith. Colin, he got the sack. Yeah. Uh, he, resigned. Rami he resigned. He resigned. He resigned. All right. He, he resigned. All right. And Rami Okasha has been a spin doctor. suspended. So two people got moved sideways. Two people got moved sideways. So we now know why. Because but, they couldn't but stop can, it. Can I take 
an issue with what you said about their, about their power base in, in local government. They don't really have much of a power base in local government. And this isn't just something now specific to now. Labour's kind of been wandering about in the wilderness, not knowing one end of its body to the other, for quite a few years. Because its power base in local government was destroyed by the last Labour administration in, where, in Holyrood, who decided to get into bed with the Liberals um, and then introduce a PR which automatically meant they were thrown to the winds. Oh, that was a well, most, yes, but yeah. well, you're forgetting that the, the, the most recent election, Labour came back and held Glasgow, retook Edinburgh mm. and retook Aberdeen. All right. Well, they didn't that they, they, they got yeah, yeah, but the whole point is they used to to run them. They ran the vast majority yes, without but, any coalition. Yes, but there has it's been a comeback. Self, this is this is this is going to be another whole catalogue of self-inflicted injuries. For the last decade, Labour up here has been going round shooting itself in the head, in the foot, and everywhere else. But it's who, lost. Who is behind this? Why would any Labour politician get up and diss universal benefits with no answer? I mean, she didn't get up and say, "Here's the alternative." She got up. She got up and said, "Don't agree with this." Now we're going to have a commission that will report after. after an independent yeah, referendum. That's yeah. a good one. That was very so good. So what's that about? That's dishonest, which was one of her arguments. She's arguing for honesty. The other point that, that I couldn't get is, you know, we need to know the ins and outs of this. We need to know all, all the little bits and pieces. When did Labour ever demonstrate any policy decision they ever made anywhere? They didn't it because they ran everything. Ever. So she now objects to the fact that she's out of power, the SNP have their priorities set for their agenda, and she wants to know all about it. Is that, is that basically it? So she wants to be part of the power structure she was thrown out of by the Scottish electorate. Yeah, because they know that they deserve it, and the electorate were wrong, obviously. It's that arrogance and contempt they're also looking to move backwards. Um, it's not just Joanne. There's a whole bit of pieces around. It's that whole, a whole unionist thing, and they're running scared. Okay, by but, the way. but look, the, look, the question, the real question is, we haven't mentioned this. This word hasn't been mentioned since we started talking about this. Why has Scottish Labour lodged to the right wing? Well, why is Scottish well, Labour given it's, up it's, social well, it's actually it's followed, undeniable. It's lodged right. It's followed mainstream. British Labour, who's n who have never actually moved away from the neo-con... Well, they, they, um, they haven't even done that, Stuart. What do you mean well, they haven't gone right? They haven't even done They've that. They've gone very far right. No, no. She stood up and questioned all these social democratic policies, oh, sorry, decisions, and then said, well, I'm not quite sure they're wrong and I'm not quite sure they're right. It has to be talked about. She, I mean, she doesn't even understand what a job in opposition is is to pick holes in the policy, find the weaknesses. She's not doing that. She's, we'll have a commission. It's muddy in the waters, trying to she make out that they're all wrong and justify, the SNP. It's, well, but she can't justify any argument now, no. because she's having a commission to make the decisions. But it's, it's a whole... So she's got a speech that's put Labour, which has been totally confused, I agree with you, into limbo for two years. Yeah, but they're still throwing grenades in. Um, you've got she can't throw grenades in because she doesn't know what the Labour Party no, policy it is. is. Yeah, but yes, what is the it, Labour Party policy? They don't have one. It's all about it, <laughs> it, it's all about <laughs> confusion. Do. It's all about confusion the electorate because because we're in such an economic state. It. We're in such an economic state. But there's also deeper. I said earlier on George Fuchs. George Fuchs because you've got that bit with the House of Parliament. They want to roll back devolution as well. Because they're scared stiff. Because this shouldn't have happened. The SNP are on the country. We only did this so we could run the country. Um, it well, is it's totally and utterly... They're going about it entirely the wrong way. I will never put a cross against a Labour Party candidate's name until I know they're in favour of universal benefits. Social democracy. That's it. They, the, the, if, if, if it's not a social democratic party, I am not voting for it. And it's not a social democratic party following that speech on Tuesday. We're going down the path of what they are doing actually in the Westminster government. You've had that from Alistair Darling. Part of their um, no campaign up here, I think the leading figure in their no campaign,
who actually appears to be quite proud and confident <laughs> that he, if he gets back in there, that he did, will inflict did, cuts did you way see to, the, to the right of Mark Nagy. Right, did you right, see the go. quote from Alistair Darling? What was that? The Tories will have a veto on democracy. Oh, sorry, on democracy. On Freudian, Freud, Freudian slip. Yeah. On devolution. A veto on devolution. If... if you vote no. If you vote no. Yeah. I mean, it's all threats. <coughs> Buster, give us back our birthright. You know, it's it's appalling. Ho hopefully the people of Scotland will stand up. Yeah. And um, and just to finish it off on a nice... No, but, but I was going to say, can you just finish by saying it's appalling again? No, <laughs> on something... Well, it is. On something nice. And that's what we got going back to the march. Is it... The Labour Party people that are all really getting upset about this, a lot of people... Right, go for independence. Um, and you could possibly get, um, who was it, said it, a renaissance of Scottish Labour believing in no, I'm universal sorry. I'm sorry. benefits, a social democratic. If they don't Labour, jump, look, if they don't jump ship, Scottish Labour are dead. Yeah. If, they have to, if, if, if people don't jump in ship, in the United now, country, it's going to be too I late. Don't trust in the I don't trust them. I voted for a party. And I voted Labour for since Kingdom Come, not waiting for local. this party. But just remember, this is just Joanne and a pile of spin doctors. No, 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 wait, wait a minute. With no, the I'm usual sorry. Suspects. Where are the members st st standing up and saying, burning their membership cards and all of that? Where are your it? friends, my friends, who are Labour Party members, council members, MSPs, what are they going to do? Oh, they're all going to take part in the consultation. Exactly. I think, I think, I think <laughs> until, so for the next two years, I have no idea that the people who I thought were going to follow their manif manifesto commitments are going to do. So what will that make you do when it comes to two-faced bastards? What will that make you do when it comes to referendum? Just tell them... Just Is it not shooting themselves in the foot again? Just tell them it's appalling again. It's appalling. Thanks very much.